What's up guys, Mike here and in this video we're pitching this year's Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 7.0 against last year's version, the Tab 2 7.0. By the end of it you'll know exactly what the new model has to offer and if it's worth buying over the older one, so tag along. With the Tab 3 7.0 Samsung refines the incremental upgrade policy. In other words, nothing major was changed from one version to the other, but the new Tab packs a bunch of tiny improvements that make it an overall better device. There is however one aspect that will clearly strike you from the moment you'll see the two. The Tab 3 is much more compact than the Tab 2 and lighter as well. As a result, the new generation slate is more comfortable to grab and use, either in portrait or in landscape mode. But the new Tab didn't just lose weight, it was completely redesigned, in order to resemble most other Galaxy handsets launched in the last months. In other words, the Tab 3 looks like an oversized Galaxy S4, with the same silver plastic straps on the sides and the same glossy rear plate that's going to scratch easily and catch fingerprints even faster. In comparison, last year's tab was dressed in a matte plastic case and feels somewhat more durable. However, the new version is clearly more ergonomic and if you're concerned about its well-being, just dress it up in a protective cover. Design aside though, the new Tab 3 is in many ways similar to its predecessor. Even the ports and buttons around the sides are placed almost identically, but it's worth mentioning that on the new version you're getting a standard micro USB port and an extra noise cancelling microphone useful as the device offers support for voice calls on some versions. Anyway, let's take the screens for instance. Both tabs feature 7 inch displays with 1024 by 600 pixel resolution, subpar by today's standards. There is a PLS panel on the Tab 2 and the TFT panel on the Tab 3, but in practice iPhone 1 can't see any difference between the two, no matter what I'm looking at. Colors, contrast, brightness or viewing angles. Overall though, both screens are quite good for this price range, so nothing to complain about except for the low pixel density. And then there's the hardware. Dual core processors can be found on both of these, with a slightly faster version on the newer tab. Both are bundled with 1GB of RAM and 8GB of storage on the base models. On the newer tab you do get a bit more free RAM and about 700MB of extra space accessible for your content, neat aspects but nothing that would blow you away. In benchmarks, the new version of the Galaxy Tab outperforms the older one, but when it comes to dealing with everyday tasks, there's really no obvious gap between the two. You can browse on them, listen to music, watch video content and even play games. Both can handle easily casual titles. But some more complex games like GTA Vice City for instance aren't compatible with the Tab 2 while they can run fairly well on the Tab 3 with occasional stuttering. That aside, it's worth mentioning that both these tablets are running Android 4.1.2, so not the latest version of the OS with TouchWiz UI on top. As you might have noticed by now, the new tab borrows the physical home button and the capacitive back and menu controls from the other Galaxy devices, while the older version integrates the main menu within the interface. I for one prefer the new approach, but you might feel otherwise. This aspect leads to some interface design differences between the two tabs. Overall, all the menus and buttons are looking somewhat better on the Tab 3, as they are more unitarily designed. For instance, have a look at the App Manager, the Notification Panel, or this list of radio buttons in the browser. However, one certain aspect seems to be missing on the new tab. Those small apps you can run on top of your main windows, available through a dedicated menu on the tab too. Or are they present and I couldn't find them? Please let me know. All this being said, the two tabs offer pretty much the same everyday experience. The 2013 version is a bit snappier, brings a better polished interface and supports some apps that aren't running on the tab too. But the differences are too few and too minor to clearly steer you towards this new model. And that's pretty much the story of this comparison. Both apps feature stereo speakers, placed on the bottom lip. Decent, but easily covered with your palms when using the tablet in landscape mode. And by the way, both can be used either in portrait or in landscape as the home screens will rotate accordingly. Besides that, the two offer the same connectivity options with wireless, GPS, Bluetooth and cellular modems with voice support on some versions. Oh, and I know that some of you reported Wi-Fi problems on your Tab 2 slates, but I haven't encountered any of them on either of these two devices tested here, not even when further away from my router with several walls in between. Anyway, the two feature almost identical cameras and camera interfaces as well. 
3 megapixel shooters without flash are placed on the back, while on the front, the shooter on the tab 3 can take 720p videos and the one on the tab 2 settles for only VGA recordings. But that's basically the only difference between the two here. Last but not least, the two Galaxy tabs bundle 4000mAh batteries and will last anywhere from 5 to 8 hours on charge, based on what you're running on them. I can't really say that one outlasts the other, so this section ends in a tie. Bottom point, the Galaxy Tab 3 7.0 is an overall better tablet than last year's Tab 2. So if you're in the market for a brand new slate that sells for less than 200 bucks, there's no reason why you would get the Tab 2 and not the 2013 version. Unless you find last year's model greatly discounted, of course. Still, if you already own a 2012 Tab, there's little reason for you to upgrade and buy the newer model. Yes, the new Tab looks awesome and offers a handful of upgrades, but neither are actually something you can't live without. If Samsung decided to get an HD screen on their Tab 3, then yes, that combined with the other aspects would have justified the upgrade. But since it's not the case, you're going to be just fine with the Tab 2. And if you plan on getting a new device anyway, you better have a look at the Tab 3 8.0 or perhaps the 2013 version of Google's Nexus 7. But more about those in some future clips. For now, it's time to wrap this up. Thank you for watching and as always, make sure to share this video to your friends, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it and subscribe for my next updates. I'll catch you later.